Gordon Brown proposes a global government, Bernie Sanders endorses Rishi Sunak, and we talk about Jeremy Corbyn's disastrous final PMQs. Right, I think we're in day three of the lockdown. I don't really know anymore if it's been days, weeks or months, but life goes on. I hope you're all keeping safe, you and your family. Uh, let's um, start today's video because every single time in history there is a chaotic situation you get the left and the the, the left-wing globalists and the, the well, or, or the communists in general uh, coming out and try to take advantage of the situation and this time there's no exception because you know whether it's from the labor party or to your uh, typical elitist globalists they are coming out to uh, suggest ideas to keep the temporary measures that we have introduced, all the governments, to basically keep them permanently, because why not? In Extinction Rebellion are happy uh, because no one's actually doing anything, no one's productive, and the socialists are happy because we're nationalizing everything, we've nationalized the country and citizens for that matter. Uh, so this is exactly what's happening. So in this video, we'll talk about that. We're also talking about Bernie Sanders and Jeremy Corbyn. And we'll give you today's piece of good news because we want you to be positive and happy uh, so let's start with Gordon Brown, a former leader of the Labour Party. Uh, he's come out and uh, suggested that during this uh, chaotic situation, we need to have a global government uh, because, you know, <laughs> because that always works. You know, collectivism and centralization is such a good idea, guys. Yeah, because Gordon Brown was such a competent leader, especially when he led us uh, through the 2008 financial crisis. Yeah, let's go with what he says because his ideas are probably right <laughs> and uh, not only he, what he says is nonsense the, the, the issue with centralizing everything you have each country I'm, I'm fully in favor of all different countries who are going through this problem to cooperate and work together but as we've seen what, ha what happened in Europe and the European Union actually the best way to do it is each country to go their own way and look after their own borders and their own land and nation uh, the European Union couldn't actually manage it uh, from Brussels uh, but this guy is saying no we, let's basically let's just have a president of the world and uh, we can fix it all together let's have an executive uh, even bigger than the European and uh, the United Nations so yeah Gordon uh, who was at the center of the international efforts to tackle the impact of the near meltdown of the banks in 2008 has now come out to say that there was a need for a task force involving world leaders, health experts and the heads of the international organizations uh, that would have executive powers to coordinate the response. The key words are executive powers. A virtual meeting of the G20 group of the developed and developing countries chaired by Saudi Arabia of all countries will be held on Thursday. This is tonight. Uh, but Gordon Brown said that it would have been preferable uh, to have also included the UN Security Council. He said that this is not something that can be dealt with in one country. Well, he's right. Uh, there has to be a coordinated global response. Uh, Brown has said that the current crisis was different to the one he was involved in. Uh, yeah, you messed up that one up. Uh, he said that that was an economic problem that had economic causes and had an economic solution. Well, it was also societal, but, but he doesn't understand that. Uh, this is the first and foremost a medical emergency, and there has to be joint action to deal with that. Uh, but the more you intervene to deal with the medical emergency, the more you put economies at risk. Yeah, that he is wrong because it, it might be a medical emergency, but the solutions have to be uh, medical political and economics economical uh, so it, the guy doesn't understand anything uh, so the, but he's not the first person proposing this sort of stuff you have um, obviously Rishi Sunak the Chancellor uh, came out with a massive package billions of pounds to help the economy short term and even as a libertarian leaning right wing I said fine let's do this this is an exceptional time uh, situation but the problem is a lot of these people are now Going to, going to be pushing the government to keep these measures long term and turn us into Cuba or Venezuela. That's what they want at the end of the day. They want to take back control of what they used to have. And the, the globalists want to get rid of the borders and basically have one uh, Earth, one planet Earth with one president. Yeah, good luck with that. And so, and for example, one idea is the universal basic income. That's obviously stupid. It's never worked in the history of the world. And the, the people who are sympathetic and say, but it's good. Let's give people free money. It doesn't matter about the intention. I don't care about the intention. The outcome 
is there. The, the evidence is there that it's never worked. Uh, Douglas Carswell said universal basic income. The Romans tried it uh, from 123 BC and it destroyed the Republic. It would destroy our liberal economic order today too. He's right. And now we have people like Bernie Sanders, an actual communist, uh, being excited about uh, the Boris Johnson's government uh, emergency package. He, do he does know it's temporary, right? <laughs> um, so in a video, he basically endorsed Richard Sunak and Boris Johnson. Uh, and yeah, please don't do that, Bernie. Uh, as many of you may know, what is going on in the UK, what is going on in Denmark is, I think, the proper approach. What they are saying to employers is we will, we will provide 80, 90 percent of your payroll if you maintain those workers. They may be furloughed, they may be working at home. But we, the government, in the UK, it was 80 percent. And that is the direction I think we should have gone right here. But uh, we didn't. Uh, there is another approach, but... Yeah, I don't really want to be supported by Bernie Sanders or people like that. Uh, so I think he has different ideas. When he's talking about Denmark and the UK, uh, he thinks that we're now having governments to keep keeping these measures long term. I really hope not. Um, but we also had yesterday Jeremy Corbyn's final uh, PMQ's Prime Minister's questions in Parliament. And uh, usually when you have a, an outgoing leader, uh, there's a bit of tribute and respect. And he actually, he or she usually come back with, you know, saying thank you. Yeah, not this time. The guy is so bitter and boring. Um, Boris Johnson... And try to pay tribute to him. He didn't actually care. And uh, but th let's talk about the achievements and the legacy, because, you know, there must be a list of achievements. So what Jeremy Corbyn achieved during his term as leader, what did Jeremy Corbyn achieve? OK, so we talked about his achievements and his legacy. And uh, so <laughs> the one thing that I personally am going to remembering by the one moment was when he was first uh, it first became the leader of the Labour Party and he came to PMQs uh, against David Cameron and he said that he went to Brussels to meet the European officials and they asked him something. Let's watch this. Last week, uh, like him, I was in Brussels meeting with uh, heads of government and leaders of European socialist parties, one of whom said to me, Said, what they said, Mr. Speaker, yeah, I'm not gonna miss Jeremy Corbyn apart from that moment. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, as we said, like uh, Boris Johnson tried to uh, pay respect, uh, Jeremy Corbyn didn't care. So, what Boris Johnson did at the end was uh, to advise Jeremy Corbyn to stay at home because he's refusing to stay at home and he's over 70 and the government gui uh, guidance is for him to stay at home. Now, to also give you the um, update in terms of uh, what each country is actually doing to tackle this problem, uh, we actually have this chart uh, that shows in terms of the lockdowns, how nations actually compare. And uh, as you can see, the United Kingdom, uh, the, the blue circles are full and then you have the impartial and the white ones are none, basically. The UK haven't closed the borders or internal movements, uh, but they have shut down schools, restaurants. Uh, the, the countries like Italy and others who have done a complete shutdown early on, actually, they didn't slow down the pace and the rate of uh, the people losing their lives. Um, so the, I'm guessing there was a reason that the UK officials were advising against that. Uh, so that's where we are now. And this is the latest uh, uh, graph in terms of uh, the rate, actually, for once the UK is slowly uh, flattening the, the line, which is good news. South Korea, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong doing really well, uh, even though Singapore apparently there's some issues again, it's coming back. Uh, but uh, Spain is quite worrying, the United States quite worrying. But the way the UK are going, if it continues, it, this could be good news for us. But as we promised, every day we'll give you um, some light-hearted clip or uh, post or meme uh, to keep you guys uh, happy and positive. Uh, today there's a post um, on Facebook done by a Labour voter who said this about Boris Johnson. This is Mike who said, This is Boris. I never voted for him. In fact, I actively vilified him. What I've seen over the past four or so days is a man who is clearly working exceptionally long, hard hours. A man who is facing something that no nation's leader has had to deal with uh, in, in living memory. 
A man who has found out this job is far more than waving a plastic flag and hiding in a fridge. The babbling buffoon act has been dropped for something far more serious. And he's doing well. In fact, I think he's doing a pretty <laughs> bang up job, if I'm honest. Uh, he takes hard and real questions every night and answers what he knows and refers to people who know better when needed. He holds it together like a leader should and uh, is there every day telling you what the best thing to do is to protect and save the people you love. Listen to the man in charge. He is our prime minister. Might not be the one we wanted, but might well just be the one we need. And in today's uh, funny clip, uh, <laughs> let's actually watch this uh, person who went to the shop and uh, politely apparently asked people to give him some toilet rolls and other essential items. Oh, went shopping this morning, went to Tesco, went in the store, went down the aisles, nothing left, no toilet rolls, nothing. Walked back outside, saw loads of people with loads of food in the, tro the shopping trolleys, couldn't believe it. So I just went up and asked them politely, I said, can you share any of your food? Can you, you know, can you help me out? And surprisingly they did i've got toilet rolls um pasta headache tablets bacon some luxury coconut oil wipes and some bread fantastic could not believe it yes you can always politely get things especially if you have a gun in your hand uh, so, <laughs> clearly that was a joke it's not actually that didn't happen uh but uh it's, it's good that people are trying to be humorous at this time uh, we have our membership club if you are not a member yet the link is in the description we are going to be having members a live stream uh, later on and uh, also in terms of uh, joining if the if the link doesn't work you can either find the join button next to subscribe or just go on your browser and type youtube.com slash my ITC slash join and uh, if you're new to the channel then make sure you subscribe and click on that bell next to it so you get notified we have a daily show at 5 45 p.m on my ITC I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new video